Uh, I want to uh, welcome you to uh, this edition of um, our business and professional division. Um, Tuesday, Thursday, uh, basically lunch and learn. Um, we are been, been doing this for the last uh, at least uh, almost two and a half weeks since the COVID-19 pandemic uh, unfortunately affected all of us and trying to bring you really good content uh, as it pertains to uh, just helping your business uh, we had um, how to work from home on Tuesday, some really good points and really good tools um, uh, as well. And then on last Thursday, uh, we had uh, a session on the CARES Act uh, and how to apply for the PPP loan and all those different uh, things uh, as well. And so uh, with that being said, um, uh, I want to introduce myself. Let me, I guess, first and foremost, introduce for those that don't know, my name is Kevin Riles, uh, I am um, the Business and Professional Division Chair for the Fort Bend Chamber of Commerce. I also sit on the uh, board of the Fort Bend Chamber of Commerce. I'm a commercial real estate broker by trade uh, and um, have a commercial real estate uh, company here in the Fort Bend uh, area. And so uh, I'm honored to allow um, and uh, introduce, I guess allow, allow is not the right word, to introduce um, my guest today. Uh, I, I, I joked with Juliet, who is our uh, director of programming. Uh, she sent me a bio uh, and I joked with her via email, like, I don't, I don't need a bio. I've been knowing Tristan for a minute from a business standpoint. I'm a client of his, uh, both on his uh, consulting business and his insurance business. Uh, from a personal standpoint, we are fraternity brothers uh, as well. Uh, and then, uh, exactly, uh, shout out to the alphas out there. Uh, and then uh, also, uh, just from a personal standpoint, I've known him probably, I would say, for the last maybe five, six years uh, or so, Tristan. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, just a really good guy. I've seen this business, his consulting and Facebook uh, and social media business just grow. Uh, Texas A&M uh, graduate, uh, exactly. So, you can go do, what do y'all do? The whoop. Whoop. The whoop. <laughs> there you go. All right. So shout out to the Aggies. I know Ryan is an Aggie as well. So he's probably doing it in the background, even though we can't see him. Uh, and um, degree in uh, business with a uh, concentration in marketing, if I remember correctly, uh, as well. So uh, not only formally educated, but also just as a small business owner uh, as well. So with that being said, um, today's subject is basically how to use Facebook to increase your business uh, during these times. Uh, and so uh, I'm going to pass it over to our host, uh, Mr. Tristan Stutton. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you for everyone uh, being on this uh, webinar today. I'm excited to bring this resource to you. So I'm not going to uh, lace you all with a lot of platitudes and fluff. I want to get right into it. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen. And so we can get into this PowerPoint. And, and again, while, while he's doing that, for, for those that are, um, and with, if you can put in the chat kind of what your business is, I saw some of you doing that. He just wants to kind of get a sense so he can kind of tailor his, 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 uh, his feedback to you guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. So thank you for that, Kevin. Um, so, yes. Yeah, so um, what we're going to do is learn how to use Facebook ads to increase your brand awareness and get more leads or customers into your business right now. So he already kind of gave you a, a brief overview of who I am. But real quick, these are our two primary goals, increase your brand awareness and gain more customers. If you all could use more customers right now, put something, put yes, heck yes in the chat box right now. Because <laughs> we're going to show you how to use this tool um, to stop posting and hoping and actually generate more clientele. So like Kevin said, I'm actually a consultant for Facebook. I've been hired by uh, Facebook to teach them how to use their curriculum in a way that's more relatable to business owners when they go across the country with their level of program, which teaches entrepreneurs how to use Facebook ads. So they've actually hired me to audit their curriculum. So that's been a pretty good, pretty good blessing. Um, they flown me out to their New York and California headquarters to meet with them and give them my feedback. And so I've taken that information and 
created something called Ads University where I teach business owners how to use Facebook ads uh, to expand their brand, generate leads, and increase their revenue. So here's a little bit more of my bio in writing. So in case some of you all want to see it, but I've taught over a thousand entrepreneurs year to date how to use this tool to get the results they are looking for and take their business to the next level. So what we're going to do, this first part of the presentation is going to be PowerPoint. Then the rest of it is going to be training. So if you have a laptop, computer, you want to go along with me, I'm actually going to train you how to run ads today. So when you leave this webinar, you can implement these tools to start generating more leads to your business. But real quick, a little bit more about me, some of the businesses I've been hired by. If you've all eaten at the Breakfast Club, put the type yes in the, the comments. If you've seen their ads within the last year, um, I'm responsible for them. Been hired by Chase Bank to do some training for their uh, sales division. And some of the other organizations here in Houston, um, I've either run ads for or been trained for them. So let's get into it. Everybody say this along with me or type it along with me. 1.6 billion, that's billion with the B. There's about six or 7 billion on the entire planet. 1.6 of them log into Facebook every single day. That's right. That's how many people are on this one platform. So if your, your, your app is a little glitchy right now, it's probably because a lot more than that are on this platform right now. We don't have that data right now, but that's on average how many people are logging in. So you got to imagine where else can I have access to that many people across the world? Now, I know many of us are local business owners. Some of us are international. Even with a pandemic, we can still be reaching out to millions of people on a daily basis, regardless of what city, country they're in or province, Providence. So for those that aren't fans of Facebook, don't worry, I got some data for you too, but this training will be about Facebook. There's 600 million people that log into Instagram every day and 100 million that log into LinkedIn. So when people start saying, well, Tristan, where should I spend my money? Where should I spend my time? Well, the numbers kind of don't lie. 1.6 are on Facebook, only 600 million on LinkedIn. I'm sorry, uh, Instagram and 100 million on LinkedIn. So if you only have a limited amount of time and money, I probably recommend Facebook. So let's look at the stats on that real quick. A lot of people always say, I don't feel like my, my target market, my end user, uh, my avatar is on this platform. Well, the average adult American spends two hours and 22 minutes a day on social media. Somebody of the, <laughs> that's buying from you is on this platform. All you need is that opportunity to expose your brand, your product or service to them on a consistent basis. So they, when they have a need or desire, they think of you first. And Facebook ads is a great tool to help you do that. Another thing is my, my age, the age range of my audience isn't on here. 90% of millennials are on social media, 77% of Gen X, and 48% of baby boomers. That pretty much covers the gamut of every product or service that's out there, for the most part, unless we're selling like uh, tank wheels or something to the US Army. <laughs> but for the most part, our audience is on there and it's a great opportunity to stay in front of them using this platform. So when we look at, okay, I'm used to this being just a place where people post selfies, go live for no reason. It's a legitimate business tool. Facebook generates $15 billion a quarter in ad revenue alone. So all my business owners, I need y'all to really process that. That's like Exxon Mobil, Chevron, Shell oil kind of profit. This is how much Facebook is making just on ads, no other product. So what do I need to have? I need to start having a paradigm shift. This is a tool. This isn't a toy. I need to be able to dive in and see why are companies spending that much money in three months on ads on this platform. So once we have the realization that it's not longer a toy, we can actually use it for our business for good because it's here to stay. No matter what we think, what we like about it, what platform we prefer, Facebook and Instagram are going to be here for a very long time. So the world's changing at a very fast pace. We need to adapt with it because a lot of what we knew about branding and marketing is not the same. Most of us are still thinking, hey, if I want to promote my business, I need to go buy a radio ad, a TV ad, maybe a direct mail piece, so on and so forth. Well, those are antiquated strategies, especially right now. Think about if you wanted to promote your business right now, how much would it cost you to go send out direct mail? How, how long would it take you to get the ramp up here? And guess what? Direct mail has less than a 1% return. 
we start thinking about, well, maybe I should run a TV or radio ad. Think about your marketplace. What are we doing right now? We're streaming TV, we're streaming music. So chances are, we're not gonna hear any ads that you're paying for. I don't really watch regular cable. I watch Netflix and Amazon. Survey your audience. What do you feel that they are, what mediums are they accessing? Right now, everyone is at home staring at a phone, tablet, or computer, scrolling through Facebook or Instagram umpteen hours a day. That's where you need your brand. And just posting and hoping on your business page isn't going to cut it. So let's look at Blockbuster. What happened in the Blockbuster? We kind of know the long story, but let's make the, the story short real quick. They didn't adapt, right? Redbox, then Netflix came along. Blockbuster said, you know what? We don't see that as a threat. People still want to get off work, drive across town, get out their car, wait in line, rent a movie, come home, incur late fees. We don't think people want to go to a, a kiosk and rent something for a dollar or stream a video. We're going to keep our business or our tactics the same. What happened to Blockbuster? Don't worry, I'll wait. Didn't still have my car, work. Tristan. I still have my car. I still have my two. I do in my presentations. I put it on my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of still having something, they still have one location um, in Washington State that is really right. a novelty store. Yeah. You can't yeah. even rent video. So what went from a household name is now kind of a novelty. We don't want that to happen to our business, and we can prevent that if we adapt our marketing strategy, especially right now. Next, when is the last time you physically held a Polaroid? Don't worry, I'll wait. It's probably been a while, right? What happened with Polaroid? Similar mindset. They did not adapt. They did not adjust. Digital uh, photography came out. They said, no, people still want to hold a physical picture. They still want film. They still want to go get it processed. Where's Polaroid now? Kind of on a comeback, but really kind of as a novelty again. It's kind of like a little kid's toy. What well, once was a household name is now a novelty. We have to adapt the way we address the marketplace and how we reach out to the marketplace. And lastly, Toys R Us. What happened with them? Amazon, Target.com, Walmart, all of these other businesses adapted to the marketplace, saw that their consumers were online and really put a lot of money and investment into that. Toys R Us still went with the antiquated way and now they're making a comeback. We don't want to be in a position where we have to come back. We want to thrive, not just survive. So we have to look at what the market is doing and adjust and adapt. We looked at how Netflix is doing right now, digital cameras. I haven't even touched a physical picture in almost a decade probably. And we know that Amazon is killing it right now. So we have to adapt if we want our business to take. So that adaptation requires a paradigm shift. We have to have a mindset. We have to say, hey, there's reasons people are spending $15 billion a quarter on this advertising on this platform. What do I need to do to get a piece of that pie? because we wanna make sure that we're early adapters, not late comers. So we have to realize what we're dealing with. We know that social media is a powerful tool, but the old way of using it is not as effective as it was. Most people are posting hoping. We need to start realizing that social media advertising is a new way to use their platform because they made a change on us. They went from, from free and organic reach to now it's pay to play. So if you all want to say this along with me or type it along with me, say suppressed. Your posts are suppressed. suppressed. <laughs> <laughs> so here's an example. I'll go to a live one um, real quick. But here's a post I made on my business page. I have 6,400 likes, followers, fans, however you want to classify. 6,400 people follow my page. At the bottom, all of you, if you go to your business page right now, you'll see only reached 171 people out of 6,400 people. So this is, this is the key moment. Pay attention to this. Many of us are like, I need to get my brand out there. I can need to keep, let people know I'm open. I need to let them know what service I'm on. So they're just posting on Facebook or Instagram, and we're just hoping. But only 100 people are, are, are seeing our content. So let me switch screens real quick. Can everyone see that? That's my Facebook page? Yes. All right, great. So as you can see, here's a live example. I posted this flyer 21 hours ago. As you can see, I have, let's see where it shows it at, 6,400 people, 6,600 followers, 6,400 people like the page, but I only reached 103 people. 
how can I grow my business if I'm only reaching 103 people? Let's scroll down. Made a post yesterday, only reached 72 people. One last post, only reached 56 people. So if you're out there trying to get customers and you're only posting on Facebook and not running ads, you can see the data right there. Out of 6,600 people, only 56, 71, 103. I cannot sustain a business with that strategy. So stop posting and hoping, or I like to call, stop using a blockbuster strategy in a Netflix reality. We have to start using Facebook ads if we want to use this platform to grow our business. And, and just uh, give me one second. I'm just letting everybody know, feel free to type. I see some of you are already typing in uh, questions. And what we're going to do is um, uh, at the end, answer uh, uh, answer your question. So you have three ways to you can answer. You can ask a question either via the chat feature uh, at the very bottom. There's the Q and A. If you want, uh, it, I would prefer if you're going to type them Q and A just because so we can kind of keep a list of, of them going. And then uh, if it's a little bit more in depth, uh, then you can always uh, hit the raise hand feature at the bottom of your uh, screen as well. So uh, I see some of you uh, have a couple questions. We'll get to those towards the end. I just wanted to forgot to say that at the very beginning. So. Sorry about that. Go ahead, Drew. No, thank you for that. Because I, I can't see your questions with the uh, screen share right now. So thank yeah. you for that. All right. So everyone say this with me. Media. People forget the operative word in social media. It's a media platform. So with that being said, we have to realize that we're putting content on a media platform. But look at what, how other media platforms treat us. If you want to go to a radio station, you got to buy an ad to be on that media platform. So media according to dictionary.com is a means of communication such as radio, TV, newspapers and magazines, and the internet. What is social media housed on? The internet that reach or influence people widely. Okay. So that being said, let's look at our top forms of advertising, right? Most people say, hey, I want to be on the radio. I want to be on 104, 97, 102. I had that boom box. I'm just letting you know, but go ahead. I know, right? <laughs> It is Throwback Thursday. Okay. It is. It is. It's all fitting. It's all fitting. So back in the day in early 1900s when radio first came out, it was main form of entertainment. People would come home from work, huddle around this little box and listen to shows, stories, news, things like that. Business owners said, hmm, my target market is on listening to this program at seven o'clock. How do I gain access to their attention at that, sh at that time? Radio station said, buy an ad. Fast forward, we still come home, surround ourselves around a box, but now it's a TV, it projects images. We still get our shows and our news and our entertainment from it. But business owner says, you know what? My target demographic watches that show at seven o'clock on your network. How do I gain access to their attention? Buy an ad. Well, one day social media woke up and said, hey, we're a whole media platform. We entertain, we give news. If you want access to the attention of our, our listeners or our subscribers, you have to buy an ad now. So that is why your posts are suppressed. That's why you can post, go live as much as you want. Only 10, 20, 50 people may ever see it because now they want you to buy an ad to reach their audience. So we can feel some type of way about that if we want. It is what it is. If we want to use their platform, we have to adapt to their, their rules of their game. So if you want to reach more people, you're going to have to use paid advertising. And when I say that, it doesn't have to be expensive. You can spend as little as $5 a day, $10 a day, and still reach thousands of people. So let's fast forward, give you an example, same business page, 6,400 fans, followers, or likes. I turned this post into an ad. Instead of reaching 171 people, now I reached 8,700 people that are in my target market. So, and I only spent maybe $20 on this particular ad and reached 8,700 people. For this one, I was particularly targeting real estate agents. So this is how you can use this tool during a pandemic to still reach your audience and generate revenue for your business instead of posting and hoping. So one last example to drive this point home, we're gonna move on. For those that may really not understand it, because I always get one or two people that's like, I still don't get it. So let's say this circle is your page, right? Your profile. You have a thousand followers for an example. And you're posting content. That content is staying in your circle. Well, Tristan, the people that follow my page are already clients, uh, family and friends, or competitors just being nosy, right? How do I get my content out of that circle to reach a new market, to get new prospects, get new leads for my business? Well, there's three free ways to get people to see your content, your brand, and your service. One is if someone shares it, either you share it in a group or someone sees it and shares it on their newsfeed, et cetera. 
Well, the second one is tag. If someone tag gets tagged in your post or your comments and things like that, that's another way you get free access outside of your circle. And the last is search. If someone happens to do a search, your page comes up and they happen to see your post or your, your content, that's a way that you can get people outside of your circle or your followers to see your content. Other than that, it's staying right there in-house and the less than 5% of the people that follow your page will ever see it, period. Go scroll down your 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 new your news feed on your business page and look at your last 10 posts. Do the math and you'll see. It's a fact. Now, what we can do though is if we know our target market and we want to make sure that our content only goes to the people most likely to buy from us, Kevin, like business owners, restaurant owners, things like that, I can go behind the scenes of Facebook and say, hey, I only want to target physicians or parents if I have a daycare, business owners, renters if I, I'm a leasing company or engineers, depending on if I'm B2B, whatever your service is. When I buy an ad, I force buy content on the phones, tablets, and computers of my target market on a consistent basis. So it eliminates the posting and hoping it eliminates the algorithm. You say, Facebook, I wanna spend $5, reach 1,000 people a day in my target market, it happens just like that. Strategically, consistently, and now you can just gotta wait for the phone to ring or leads to come in on your website. So that is how. The, yes. the question I've gotten before, uh, and uh, I'm, I know I'm, I'm asking a uh, question, but just for clarity, um, all of us have quote unquote personal pages or personal accounts, I should say, right. versus the business page. I have, I think almost, I'm almost to the limit now, 5,000 personal followers, uh, yeah. but I do have two business pages as well. And so this diagram is specific to a business page, correct? Not your personal uh, uh, page or for lack of a better term, personal account. Yes. Great question. You can only run Facebook ads from a business page. So if you're not created one yet, please do so. That is the only way that you can create Facebook ads or Instagram ads. So uh, great, great point on that. Thank you for that. And you can tell me to shut up if I, if you're going to cover something. No, that's so we know question. each other. I won't take it. I won't take it personal. <laughs> no, great question. Great question. So, Using ads is gonna help us expedite the no like, trust factor. Regardless of what business you're in, we know that people do business who they know, like, and trust. So if they see you on a consistent basis, they're aware of you, you're putting content out there that they can resonate with, that's gonna help build that rapport, that familiarity, and when they have a need or desire, they're gonna think of you first because there's brand recognition, there's trust, things like that. So I promised you a short presentation on a PowerPoint slide. Now we're gonna transition over to Facebook ads manager. So for those who are not familiar with how to get there, um, go to your business page, um, go to your business page and uh, on the computer, you'll see an upside down triangle right here next to a question mark and the other icons. You scroll down, it says manage ads. You're gonna click that, it'll probably have your account name right there and then you can go right to your ads manager. But real quick in case you do not, have that and it says something different just go to google type in facebook ads manager and right there you want something that says facebook.com business tool you click on that and that will get you to your ads manager so if you don't have the upside down triangle if you can't see that just go to google type in facebook ads manager the first link will take you to your ads manager account all right so for the sake of time i'm just going to dive in so hopefully you all see a screen that looks similar to something like this once we get there. If not, don't worry, just take notes and go along with me. And lots of options on here, right? Lots of different buttons. Don't worry about every single button on here. The main one you need to focus on for this particular training to get you effective is this green create button. Don't worry about everything else. It's kind of like the TV or satellite guide channel where channel guy, where it's like a thousand channels, but you really only watch one or two stations. So this is your one station you need to worry about this green create button. Um, real quick before I do that though, a lot of people ask me, Tristan, what's, what's the benefit of using uh, Facebook ads? How do I know if I'm getting a good return on my money? What are results? Well, think about what you get from other forms of advertising, direct mail, what kind of analytics do you get? Radio, TV, right here, I can look and see exactly how many people my ads reached how many impressions I got, uh, how many clicks I received. If I go right here, 
how much I spent. Even if I wanted to say, hey, how many people watched my video to the full extent? I can go right here and say, okay, I had 131 people watch 25% of my video, 18 watch 100 of it, 100% of it, so on and so forth. So the analytics are so deep and so vast on here, you know exactly what's going on with every marketing dollar that you spend. And so you can know exactly what's working and what's not working in real time. There's not a 30 day delay. Hey, I ran this ad for a week and I'm not getting any clicks. You can cut it off right then and there. That's another thing that's a benefit of this is there's no contract, there's no setup. You just say, hey, I wanna spend $5 on an ad. If it's working, great, keep it going. If it's not, turn it off. That's it. And I'm gonna show you that real quick. So everybody, if you're going along with me, uh, click this green create button. If you can't, just follow along, click this. Screen like this should pop up for you. Once again, lots of different options. The main one we need to be focused on right now in the pandemic, yes, there's a lot more to Facebook ads and I do a full training through my Ads University course, but I wanna teach you one thing you need to, that you can take away right now is go to the traffic ad, okay? So we will, if you have, website, have a website, landing page, things like that, some type of lead capture form to where people can schedule a call, get in contact with you, see your menu, if your restaurant, whatever your business is, we can drive traffic specifically to our website with this ad. All of these are optimized based on the action you want to happen. So for instance, traffic, Facebook knows what everyone does on their platform. So they'll optimize this ad to show it to the people first who are most likely to click the ad and let your website load. This one, video views, if you have a video ad and you want people to watch all of it, they'll show it to people most likely to watch most of your video. Reach, this is basically like a digital direct mail campaign. This is gonna display your ad to as many people as possible for cheap as possible. But here's a caveat to this, people make a mistake on this, they spend a lot of money on reach. This is not optimized for a KPR or, um, or basically an action that will generate revenue for you. Reach ads won't get people to call your office, they won't get people to click on your link, it's just going to display. So this is more advertising more than sales, if that makes sense for you. So if you're just like, hey, I need everyone in the neighborhood to know we're still open and we have to-go orders, or hey, you can reach us at this number, that's, that's the, the best. That's the digital equivalent of a, a, of a um, billboard, basically, is what you're saying. Exactly, exactly. So I want people to take note of this. It's not optimized to get P K uh, KPI, key performance indicator, or get people to click or call. It's just a billboard. Traffic is going to help you with conversion, sales, clicks, all of the above. So those are the two we're going to focus on today. Actually, let me just start with a reach ad real quick. So everybody click reach, scroll down, make sure these two gray buttons look like mine, because if yours most likely has that bottom blue one on, just click it and turn it off. I want yours to look just like that. You can name it whatever you like. Uh, let's say I could say Fort Bend Awareness. Hey guys, we are recording this as well. We will have it up on the uh, Fort Bend Chamber website uh, within the next 24 to 48 hours, a link to it. So just in case you're not going as fast as, as uh, Tristan or can't, you know, want to get a more detail, you will be able to see this. So Awesome. Awesome. Gotcha. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to cover a lot of ground in a short amount of time. So yeah, yeah no, it's all good. No, yeah, you're doing great. You're doing great. I just want to let everybody know. Yeah. Gotcha. 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 All right. So just name it whatever you like. I typically name it what I'm trying to do and leave the objective on the tail end so I'll remember what I'm doing. So like, for instance, if I spend $10 on this, I don't get any clicks. Okay, I was doing a reach ad. I was just trying to show a lot of people my brand, my expectation is set. Click continue. Second page pops up. So if we look over here, this tells you right along where I'm at. So if you ever get lost, it'll highlight blue where I'm at. So you choose the page you want your ad to come from. So I'm gonna choose my business page. So if you have multiple pages, so you have multiple brands, that's very important. Make sure you choose the right page because you don't want <laughs> your hair salon advertising, <laughs> <laughs> lawn care services or whatever. So choose the right page. And then- We cut right hair, and, we cut hair and, and, uh grass, go ahead. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Same scissors. <laughs> right. Here is a pro tip. Right here, you'll see locations. Facebook, regardless if you like it or not, knows where you live, knows where you're visiting or traveling. Put people living in this location. So let's say you're a restaurant, you're trying to target people. 
uh, around your business. Let's see, what's the channel? Commerce Green, Commerce Green. Commerce Green. Sugarland, there you go. All right, so let's say I wanted to target everyone between a one mile or 50 mile radius of my business. Most likely you're gonna do maybe one to 10 miles. So now what Facebook is saying in this blue circle you see right here, hey, target everyone who lives in this blue sphere that is on Facebook or Instagram, period. That is how powerful it is. They know exactly who lives where based on your IP address, where you check in, so on and so forth. So for most business owners, specifically a restaurant, um, salon, daycare, you probably need to just stay within a 10 mile radius. As you see, that's pretty good. So everybody within that blue circle will see your ad. Now this is where it's important to know your target demographics. You can target based on age, gender, language, so on and so forth. So if you know your target customer is at least 25 to let's say 55, you could say, hey, Facebook only display my ad to everyone within a 10 mile radius of my location that's 25 to 55. And if you focus on just men, maybe it's a barbershop, women, salon, nail shop, things like that, you can target based just specifically on gender or all, depending on your target demographic. Language, so you wanna target based on a specific language. You can do Spanish, you can do Korean, you can do English, all of the above. So if you have a specific demographic, you can focus on there. But here is where the real magic happens. So if you all are on your phone or distracted right now, here's where the real magic happens, the detailed targeting. This is where people start feeling, I feel like Facebook's listening to me, or how did they know I wanted that right now? Because of PIB, they have demographics, interests, and behaviors. I call it PIB, profile information, interests, and behaviors. So look at what everyone has in our profiles that we use to create our Facebook account. We have our gender, relationship status, um, our job title, college degree, college major, things like that. Well, if I'm a marketer, those are the key demographic details I need. So if I'm in Sugarland, I wanna target, I have a daycare, I wanna target women that have children that graduated from Texas A&M, um, that are in 10 mile radius of my house, I can be that specific. If I have an engineering company or something that I sell products to engineers, I wanna target everyone that graduated from UT, um, petroleum engineering ages 35 and older or work at Shell, I could be that specific with my ads and only those people will see my advertising. So my advertising and marketing dollars are a lot more impactful because only those people are seeing, the people that are most likely to buy from me are seeing my ad. So you can get lost and start you know, clicking on things all day, education level, financial, if you wanna target people that are top income earners, life events, um, people have upcoming anniversary. So this is all another way to use this tool to be creative with our business models. A lot of us are having to adapt right now. So I'll give you an example. Um, a friend of mine has a, he's a wedding MC. So he MCs weddings, um, basically a wedding hype man, but he's adapted his business because obviously he can't do weddings. People who have upcoming birthdays, he's saying, Hey, I can do a virtual birth, be your virtual birthday MC. And he can go and say, hey, everybody has a, a birthday coming up in April and May. I can run an ad and say, hey, I have this service for your birthday. Click my link and schedule a call. So this is ways we can um, use this tool to adapt our business model as well. Show you a few more and I'm just going to kind of get into it. Uh, let's see. Newly engaged, people who have recently moved, people who are parents. So if I have a daycare or something servicing kids, maybe a tutoring service, I could target people who are parents of children, most likely nine to 12 years old, one to two years old, um, infants, things like that. So if you cater to kids, this is where you need to be spending your money and time right now. Relationships. Just, just I, can, I can see now why you always say, don't hit that boost button, go through the ads manager. Yes, sir. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't boost, create a full ad because right. there's so much more options and strategy. I mean, if you're creative, you could look at this right here and think of five other ways you could pivot your business depending on right. your service right now. You could target, if you do therapy um, or counseling, you could target people that are divorced, um, in a relationship, married, separated, so on and so forth, where people work, industry, Kevin. So if you're targeting specific industries for yeah. commercial, uh, construction, cleaning. Yeah, business and finance, yeah, all business of that. Business and yeah. finance. I wanna target people that are in IT and healthcare legal services, 
veterans. So if you service veterans, you could target everyone who is most likely a veteran on Facebook and Instagram, period. There's no more hoping. <laughs> it's, I'm, I'm forcing. So let me backtrack away. A Facebook ad is really forced paying Facebook to force your content on the phones, tablets, and computers of your target market. So let's say I have a, a, a loan program for veterans. Mm -hmm. I can pay Facebook five or $10 a day and say, only show my ad to veterans. Mm -hmm. Boom. And real quick, hobbies and activities, food and drink, beverages based on what they like, so on and so forth. So you can go in there or you can just start typing. I can just say parent. So people who are parents. And once you click one, Facebook is very intuitive. All you have to do now is click suggestions and it kind of assumes what you're trying to do. So I can click parents with teenagers, parents with nine and 12 year olds, so on and so forth. So if you have a business and you know that a bunch of kids are at home right now and their parents are looking for any kind of distraction, this might be the move for you right here. <laughs> so what you can do is just type that in there. And what this says is right here, potential reach. So within that 10 mile radius of the address you typed in, so you could type in an address an entire city, state, continent, all of the above. But specifically, right now we're dealing with this 10 mile radius of an address, or you can even do zip codes and multiple zip codes. 70,000 people in this area are parents. So we scroll down, and now look at that. The daily budget, I'm spending $5 a day, and Facebook is telling me for $5 a day, their estimated results are they'll show my ad to between 2,000 to 6,000 people on a daily basis. Now, Kevin, can you get a venti caramel frappuccino from Starbucks for $5? <laughs> uh, yes, and my friend calls uh, Starbucks four bucks because everything is above four bucks after you finish uh, ordering. So, yes. Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, for the, co uh, the cost of a cup of coffee, you know, that close, um, I can reach, <laughs> let's just do something in the middle. Let's say 4,000. I can reach 4,000 people a day that are interested in, my, most likely interested in my product or service in a 10 mile radius and on a the platform where the average adult spends two hours a day. Well, probably more than that now. So, if you just start yeah, playing, the, the reach has always been uh, good. And, and this may be beyond the scope of this kind of virtual seminar. Um, the cool thing about being, I do a lot of direct mail for my uh, business. So people say, how do you get your, I, I list a lot of department complexes and retail centers. Uh, and so I still use direct mail because a lot of the owners of those still are people that check their mail. Yes. Uh, with that being said though, once I get those listings, the engagement of advertising those listings other than uh, you know, old school signage, you know, this has been uh, helpful I think what I struggle with and maybe others, and that's why I'm just bringing it up here is, you know, you can get really good at, at targeting your demographic, but it's the, the, the design of the ad and how you want them to engage uh, is, is another. So, you know, I'll put up a link to my website to get in for more, more information about a listing, but it seems like the ones that work on me the best as a consumer are the ones that kind of look like uh, regular posts in my feed instead of ads. So again, might be beyond the scope, but I, I this is so great to create the traffic. I've created the traffic. I think where I've kind of dropped the ball is the design of my ad. Yeah. No, that's a very valid point. I was going to cover that a little bit of that on the next yeah. section where we create the ad. You don't want your image to look like an ad, even though it is an ad, because you got to look at the platform we're on. We're on social media. People don't get on here to conduct business. They, they want to look at cat memes and hear about Joe Exotic and all the cool <laughs> cats and kittens out there. So when Those of you that don't know Netflix, I'm telling you, it, I know it's going to seem weird, but stick with it. It is, is the worst, best thing I've ever seen a documentary. Go ahead. I can't describe it any better. It's a wonderful, <laughs> beautiful distraction. <laughs> exactly. exactly. All right. So we look here at our daily budget, budget and schedule. You can plug in any dollar amount you want. I know a lot of us are hurting right now, uh, but if we spend $10 a day, we can reach three to 10,000 people a day, not a month, not a year, not a week a day and let people know we're open, we're still servicing them, we still have opportunities for them to convert and conduct business with us. So you can plug in as little as a dollar a day as if you want it. So you still will reach 600 to 2000 people on a daily basis and let them know that you can help them out. So Facebook ads is very cost um, effective for you right now compared to other forms of marketing. And once again, no contract, no long-term commitment. If I wanna go in here and cut this off tomorrow, I can. If I want to increase it from a dollar to ten dollars, I can. You have full complex flexibility 
and control of your advertising and advertising dollars. And, and Tristan, just a time check here, everybody, it's about 1245. Okay. Um, we, we'll go to about uh, maybe a couple minutes past one o'clock, but I just okay. wanted to kind of let everybody know uh, that okay. uh, we're aware of the time. So. Okay, I'll speed it up real quick. So right here, frequency cap, you can even control how many times a day people see your ad. So right here, if I want to say, I want people in that blue circle to see my ad three, I would say up to three times a day, a little more than that gets a excessive. Um, I want them to see my ad three times a day, every one day. You have that much control over your advertising versus waiting for a radio spot to say, we'll play your radio at this 10 second spot during this time frame and hope that people that want your product are listening at that time. So you have control over that. We go to the last section, the ad, what Kevin was just talking about. This is where you actually upload your image or your video, whatever you want them to see the verbiage you want to be shown on your ad, and then the link you want them to go to, if you want them to go to your website. So real quick, you just scroll down, click add media. You can choose a video or image. I'll just choose image. What have you found to be the, the, the best capture image or video, or just depends on what you're, what you're doing? Um, for me, video, for me, <laughs> video. I just did this real quick because it would take time for the video to upload and all that stuff. Right. Right. At the time. Um, but yes, video is the best uh, medium. If you don't have video, don't let that defeat you because I know we're limited and stuck at home. Um, use an image, a good quality image, and make sure it's professional. It still will have an effect um, and help you out. So let me just choose one image real quick for the sake of this example. You can choose images that you've already used from previous ads. If you've uploaded an image to your business page, you can choose that or Instagram or stock photos. So. Um, they have a free Shutterstock account, so you can just go in there, let's say type real estate, and a bunch of stock real estate photos will populate. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm just going to use one just so y'all can get an idea of what it'll look like. Pro tip, make sure you click edit when it looks like this because uh, and crop it, because otherwise it will display a little messed up. <laughs> so click <laughs> let's say original. Now it will give you the full format of the image you want. And it'll let you know what your viewers will see. So right here, let's take that out. And let's just say I'm creating this ad to promote a my online course. You're looking like your verbiage up here. Now, of course, I would put a little bit better, more crafty verbiage in right. there for the sake of time. Um, here's a formula if you don't know what to type. Call out your audience, identify pain point, provide a solution, and then have a call to action. So are you a parent? Call out my audience. I'm frustrated with trying to keep your kids occupied. Identify a pain point, provide a solution next. We have an online tutor tutorial service or online training for your kids. Click the link below to learn more. Identify your, call out your audience, pain point, solution, call to action. That's a simple formula that regardless of what your business is, you can use that if you don't know what to say, type that above. Click this button that says add a website URL, put something in the headline, so face, that's gonna capture their attention. And so it's funny, the headline actually shows up at the bottom of it. Hmm. So that's what will just dis be displayed at the bottom. And then type in your website. Tristan, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? I'm here. Hello? Okay. You, we, yeah, we lost you. That, that's what will be, be displayed. There you go. Go ahead. Okay, gotcha. All right. So, yeah. So you type in your text. You type, click the add a website URL. Type in a headline. Type in the link. Don't worry about the description. Don't worry about display link. Just leave that blank. And then your call to action, leave that as learn more. That's the most effective call to action button. Yes, there's subscribe, buy now, so on and so forth. Um, hmm. But that is the one that performs the best because it's not as jarring as the other ones. Remember, this is a social platform. People aren't on here to buy. So regardless of the of the So this is business. Like, and I'll show you what it'll look like. On, you say, what's that? So regardless of uh, the business, yeah. um, learn more is, is the most engaged button. 
Absolutely. Hmm. Learn more. So we can get into retargeting, things like that. We don't have time, but learn more. Right. For you to leave this training and implement something, learn more, it's going to be your safest bet. Then you can see what it looked like on, on desktop, on stories. You can advertise in stories. You can see what it'll look like in Instagram, on Instagram, so on and so forth. So it'll show you what your ad looks like. And then after that, you just click the confirm button. And then it will launch your ad. It'll take a little bit for Facebook to review it and approve it. Um, but then it'll go live. So I'm not going to click that because um, I have too many ads going right now. But that is how you create a reach ad. And real quick, I will go back and show you how to create a traffic ad to get put and, out and into your website. That, that ad is Facebook and Instagram or are you selecting the platform? I'm going to show you that on this one. I'm going to show you how to get okay. to um, choose wherever you want it on Facebook, Instagram, your stories, uh, so on and so forth on this one. And then we'll do Q&A and wrap it up. Sure. All right. So go back to the create button. Everybody click traffic this time. Make sure these are off. We'll just leave the campaign name as is. And this time you want to leave it default to website because we're trying to get traffic to our website. Once again, you can choose your audience. So if you want to do a specific zip code, you can do multiple zip codes at the same time. I don't know. What's another four being zip code out there? Kevin? 479 is another sugar land. This is the real estate broker in me. Uh, there we go. Yeah. So if I wanted to choose several different zip codes, because I know that's where my target market is, I can do all of that. If I just wanted to do, let's get this out the way, just Sugarland. I can do that. If I wanted to do Sugarland in Missouri City, I can do multiples, so on and so forth. So I have different options available to me for targeting, but let's just do Sugarland for this one. Second verse, same as the first, choose your age range, gender. Let's say I have a restaurant and I want to target people who are most likely interested in food delivery. I type in Postmates, hmm. people interested in online food ordering, Grubhub, DoorDash, Insta, Uber Eats. That's employees. Uh, let's do fast, fast food restaurants, so on and so forth. So what's the address for the chamber again? Let me do a... I think it's 455 Commerce Green. 455 Commerce Green. So if Juliet I'm like, and Ryan, I want credit for knowing that by heart, even though I'm a board member. I just thought I'd put it out there. <laughs> so I wanted to target everyone that lived in, or in a 10 mile radius, let me do lived in real quick, a 10 mile radius of my restaurant that are interested in food delivery services, wouldn't that be pretty effective <laughs> to increase my hey, to-go orders? I'm over here thinking about businesses I'm not even in. I know one of our attendees, King, uh, uh, owns Big Frog t-shirts. Uh, yeah. I'm thinking King should be selling I Survive Rona. T-shirts hey. or something like that. You, yeah, know. you can target people that like T-shirts or do online uh, purchase online. So here's a pro tip right King, here. King, I want, I want commission on that. <laughs> here's a pro tip if you own a restaurant or you use this for your business. Click this narrow audience button. And so let's say I have a seafood restaurant. So people who are interested in seafood restaurants now there's 5,500. So what I'm saying is I want to only target people that are interested in seafood and home delivery services based on what they do online. So there's 5,400 people. We scroll down, look at our budget. I know restaurants are struggling right now, but if I spend $5 a day of the 5,400 people that said they're interested in seafood delivery, I spend $5. I'm going to reach between 400 and 1,000 people a day and generate between three to 15 clicks to my website to help me increase my uh, to-go order orders or delivery orders. So this is how businesses today in a pandemic can use this tool at a low cost and still reach their target market 
and still increase sales and keep their doors open. So that's the whole purpose of this training. Tristan, I would assume, um, because I even find myself that engagement in social media right now is probably at an all-time high because we don't have anywhere to go. Uh, That's my assumption. Is that that backed up by facts? (laughs) They haven't released any data yet, but I believe it's an increase of well over 50% from some things I've kind of just seen online. Um, But think about it. We're all stuck at home staring at a phone, tablet, or a computer. And if we're just posting and hoping on our, our page, we're reaching only 100 people, 50 people. I can go in here and spend $5 and force my content on the phones, tablets, and computers of between 400 to 1,200 people a day and generate three to 15 clicks to my website. Yeah. That's, That's how awesome. it works. That's yeah. how it works. And so to go one last step, and then we can do Q&A. We're wrapping up at 12.55 here. Like you said. Yeah, maybe- we usually go over about five, 10 minutes. So, you know, if you're, okay. you're good. I just always like to give people a time check. Just in case. Okay, gotcha. Well, let me go back then and your question earlier, where can I show my ad at? Right here. Because if I want to show my bikini body on, on Instagram, how can I, you know, get it out there? Tristan? We got to put those Pringles down. Um, <laughs> 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 you get there. Go to placements <laughs> and under, instead of automatic placements where it defaults and recommends, click manual. And this is how you literally can be everywhere online. So with all these boxes checked that $5, well, Facebook is going to try to show your ad on Facebook feed, the Instagram feed, the marketplace, um, the right-hand column, which is basically like this over here if you're on a desktop, Messenger, Stories. Stories is getting over 500 million views a day. So that's a good place to display your product or service. Um, in articles, so when people click these articles um, about 5G causing Corona, things like that, your ad <laughs> show up there. <laughs> I've seen that advertising. That's why I'm laughing. Yeah. Uh, different apps and um, websites. So Facebook partners with third party companies. And I've been, my ads have been on Pandora, uh, Spotify. Photo I saw Google. you on USA Today the other day. I read USA Today online and I saw, and I, I, I started laughing. I said, this brother is, is really uh, awesome. uh, doing it. So. Appreciate you. And you know what? I hate to tell my secret, but it's just this click of a button right there. Yeah. That's what allows me to show up on, on those different platforms. Just that one click of a button. If I only want to be on Instagram, I can just click right here, Instagram. So you have complete control of your advertising for a very low cost. So that's why I'm really trying to drive home people. People say I can't afford it. If we're in a position where we can't afford a dollar a day, $2 a day, we have to have some different kind of conversations. But hopefully we're in a position where we can do that to keep our business um, alive and thriving right now. So we click continue, second verse, same as the first. Choose your page. It's a little different on traffic. It's on the back end. Once again, choose your image or your video. So you select that. And it's like Kevin said, you don't want your image or graphic to look like an ad. So um, this one, don't look at that one. I was just trying to do something real quick. Um, but let's say I wanted to promote a piece of business. I may just put a picture of a nice, delicious looking pizza. Choose that. Scroll down. And while that loads, you can put your copy there. So obviously I will pick a more brighter picture of pizza, but if I had a a pizza mom and pop shop, put that there, call out my audience. We deliver, et cetera. And then a headline is going to capture attention. And then you may want even want to put it if the food service delivery you use, like Uber Eats, Postmates, if they have a link that goes straight to your Uber Eats link where they can order right there, I will put that there. Or you want to go have them go straight to your menu on your website, not the home page, but have them go straight to the menu. So they won't get too lost and distracted. So now when they click this ad, either your Uber Eats link pops up or your menu pops up on your website and they can order right then and there. And that's how you can increase your um, restaurant sales. And then you just scroll down, click confirm and voila. So it's 12.58, I think it's Q&A time, Kevin. All right, so um, uh, one of the questions we got in the chat is, can you just describe what stories are? Um, um, so uh, I'll let you describe that, but uh, uh, I know that people are using stories uh, as well, both both on Instagram and Facebook. So, Yeah, so stories are basically a display, 15-second display 
of what you got going on. So depending on your business, you can just do a quick picture of a video and say, hey, here's what we did when we first woke up. Hey, this is what happened when we opened the store today. Um, these are some items we have and people can just look and consume that story at 15 seconds at a time. Our attention span is getting shorter and shorter um, as a society. So it's really a quick way to get your content out there and get in front of the eyes of people. Awesome, thank you, sir. All right, I'm gonna go back up to uh, some questions we had earlier. Uh, guys, if you have questions, uh, please type them in the Q&A uh, button uh, um, down at the bottom. Uh, so Matt has a question, how is the uh, Facebook reach number determined? What does the Facebook engagement number mean? So reach is the individual people that your ad was shown to. Um, engagement is people who like, comment it, or share or engage with that post or that ad. So reach is, if, I, if it says 1,000, that means 1,000 people saw your ad. Engagement, if it says 50, that means 50 people either commented, liked, clicked on, or shared on that post or that ad. Where are you on turning on comments on ads? And I'll get to the next question. Um, leave them on. And if yeah. someone trolls you, delete it. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. My ad, I paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see any gotcha. argue with you. <laughs> gotcha. All right. Can you uh, purchase uh, reach during a live video or is it only for ads? Uh, Damien asked. The, you cannot promote a live video. So once it's done on your page, your business page, not personal page, then you can go behind the scenes and promote it to more people via an ad. Gotcha. Uh, you, you reach 8,700 uh, people with your ad, but only 59 engagements. This is uh, uh, what I'm wondering. He, uh, this is going back to the first, uh, as far as engagement versus uh, versus uh, uh, numbers reach. So uh, we're okay with that. Okay, if you're throwing an event, let's say, uh, is it best to focus on people who live uh, in a 25 or so mile radius of that, or is it better to focus on the people that visit that area? So today's events are going to be virtual. So now you got the benefit of <laughs> targeting the whole, the whole world. <laughs> Whoever right. has access let's, to Zoom and the internet. <laughs> let, let's assume that if, if we go back, when we go back to normal, what yeah. would you say? I would say a uh, 25 mile radius. When I do my live um, Facebook ads trainings, I typically stay within 25 mile radius of Houston. Gotcha. All right. What's the difference between boosting and an ad? I think we kind oh. of saw that real here. Boosting, um, it's not as robust. It doesn't give you as many um, options when it comes to targeting, retargeting, um, structuring your ad. Um, so if you're going to spend the money, you might as well do the full adult version. I, I consider the boost like the little boost receipt. Sit at the adult table and make a full ad. So, so what boosting reminds me of, you know, when you're in a grocery store, you finish grocery shopping and you come up to the counter and they got the candy and all the little stuff right there. Right. Boosting reminds me of, ooh, let me just grab that real quick and pay for something that I really don't need I don't have a full versus going back to the candy yeah. aisle and having yeah. more more, yeah, more, um, offer, more robust yeah, options. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, let me see here. So that's the uh, Q&A questions that I have. Uh, does Facebook charge, uh, this is off chat, does Facebook charge per click? No, so they charge you per day, but they'll let you know how much of your money is spent on clicks. So let's say I spend five dollars a day and I only got five clicks. They're just going to show that I spent a dollar per click. They charge you to show your ad to as many people as, as possible within that range. Gotcha. Um, so unlike um, King, you probably asking that based on Google's uh, uh, yeah. price per click uh, formula. Uh, and then um, uh, the formula uh, for the text. What is the second point? Uh, um, so you have four to to yeah. type in. What's the second point? So identify your your target market or your customer. The second one is identify a pain point, provide a solution, and then a call to action. What do you want them to do? Many ads I see, hey, we sell great X, Y, and Z. Now what, do you want them to call, click, send you a message, go to your website, like what do you want them to do? You have to lead them to the action you want that's a part of your sales process. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, and I think we've a uh, answered all questions that have been uh, asked and so, um, um, I guess I would ask that you, you know, just tell them uh, if they want to take the full um, uh, kid and caboodle and, and learn all the, uh, man, see, I didn't even set, I didn't even set that up. And he was ready. <laughs> we didn't even talk about that. They will, you know baby. 
So yes, um, uh, tell them about the class. Tell them yes. About the class. yes, sir. So this is a uh, pre-recorded class that teaches you step by step. If you thought today was a lot of information, we're not even at the tip of the iceberg. Matter of fact, we're still swimming to the iceberg. There's so much more um, that's available and options. And I teach you in this hour and 45 minute training that's pre-recorded. Um, it's called Ask University. You get lifetime access. It's seven easy modules. You can rewind it as much as you want. Um, and it's a 30 day money back guarantee. And I'm giving you a, a Rona discount. Um, it's normally 197 <laughs> um, <laughs> to, to, help dis, to help business owners. I've reduced it to $75. So click on that link or go to that link at university online. If someone could type that in there for me um, in the chat section or the Q&A, that way you can go there, you can purchase it. And I teach you step-by-step step everything I've learned over the years from running ads for myself and clients, how to get more traffic to your website and generate more business during this pandemic. Uh, and for those of you that, um, again, I've known Tristan for a while. I just typed it in. hope I got, I spelled it right. Oh, no, I didn't. So don't use the first one. Hold on. University okay. online. I forgot the word online. That. Dot com. GR8.com. Yep. All right, there we go. Second one. Um, so, uh, and then Tristan, I know you're doing it virtually now. Are you going to, do you plan on doing virtual live um, as university anytime soon? Yes, great question. So this is for general business owners. So regardless of what your business is, daycare, restaurant, whomever, I have a real estate version that gives you five hour CE that is live as well. If you go to my Facebook page, um, it's in my events section. Um, that's a live virtual training. It gives you five hours CE, and I teach you specifically real estate tactics to expand your brand, generate leads, and increase virtual open house attendance. So, uh, gotcha. but I don't have a live one for general business right now, just to pre record it. Gotcha. Well, well, guess what? You got time. Um, so, uh, so, let's get on. No, I'm just joking. Uh, <laughs> with that, uh, guys, I want to thank you, um, uh, Tristan, for doing this. I think it's been uh, really helpful. People are always um, or have already started saying, hey, this is uh, uh, great, great information. Uh, I've gotten some captivated, great, great useful uh, uh, resource. So, thank you guys for the feedback. Uh, we really do appreciate it uh, here. Uh, Juliet, if you could, uh, or Ryan, uh, just let me know real quick as I close out what the next session will be. I don't have it in front of me. Oh, I have that. Next. Actually, I have oh. that as well. Okay. Man, you know, yeah, exactly. So our next session uh, for the Fort Bend is Fort Bend moving forward with our business coach, uh, Glenn. Uh, he is, um, so this was a technical class on how to move forward. Uh, this is more kind of connecting, collaborating, and coaching on, on some practical tactical blocking and tackling things you can do in your business uh, for uh, doing that. So that's Monday, April 13th, 2020 at noon. Uh, and uh, he has done uh, that. And then uh, next Tuesday, we are doing um, CARES Act Part 2. Uh, so for those of you that are wondering about the CARES Act and how to apply for the uh, payroll loan and all the other uh, things that were a part of the CARES Act, the $2 trillion CARES Act, we are doing that. I'll be hosting that with uh, people from uh, Frost Bank, uh, from Amogee Bank, uh, and then two CPAs. Uh, we did it the day that it came out. Things have obviously changed and gotten updated since then. So we're doing CARES Act Part 2. And then a Lamar Consolidated uh, ISD update on Friday. Uh, on Friday. So, um, you know, the blessing of this, this horrible pandemic is, um, you know, we have been able to kind of switch our programming virtual and we are giving it to you left and right. I, I, I want to commend Juliet, Ryan, um, Carrie, uh, Stacy, and Pay. I always want to make sure I save everybody's name so I don't miss out uh, on putting everything together, but specifically uh, Juliet and Ryan for coordinating these uh, sessions and speakers and just allowing me to show up in my uh, Corona outfit uh, and, and, and be here. So again, Monday, um, moving forward with uh, Glenn Smith uh, coaching on Tuesday, CARES Act Part 2 uh, at noon. All these sessions are at noon. And then on Friday, uh, Lamar Consolidated uh, ISD update uh, as well. So we have some really good programming uh, for you. And uh, just want to thank you guys for, for logging on. Any closing comments, uh, Tristan? Um, no, I appreciate you all giving me this uh, opportunity and platform and I'm praying for all the business owners out there. And of course, I'm a business owner as well. So one more plug. If somebody wants an hour <laughs> strategy session, 
Um, they just need, they don't want to learn how to do Facebook ads, but just, hey, I need some marketing tactics. They can go to that link right at the bottom. Bitly Rona strategy session. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, 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 ABS, I always be selling. Uh, so, uh, uh, so Tristan, I appreciate it, man. I'll talk to you offline. I appreciate uh, all you do. Uh, and uh, guys, um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to, to email uh, the uh, chamber. Again, this presentation will be up on the chamber's website within the next 24 to 48 hours. Uh, uh, so if you miss some of the stuff and want to go back on this particular session, you'll be able to do that uh, as well. So again, thank you for joining us and we will see you hopefully on Monday. Stay safe, guys. Wash your hands uh, and use your mask. Yes, please. <laughs> hey, man, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye.